butter, Chardonnay. They're a marriage made in heaven, right? Well, let's break them up, shall we? It's pocket wine school. Hi, I'm Tommy from Pocket Wine School, and right now we're talking about the butter flavors in Chardonnay and what to do about it. But first off, if you've got a particular topic or grape you'd like to see covered here, let me know in the comments below and maybe leave a like. And if you want tips on how to become a wine expert in your mother's eyes, subscribe to this channel. Now, meet me at the butter ball. First off, does it have anything to do with oak? No. Oak can add lots of fascinating flavors to wine, but butter is not really one of them. You can have oak without butter and butter without oak. It's important to make this distinction when talking to your waiter or salesperson in order to help them find you the wine that you want. The term oaky is just as likely to be misused as it is used correctly. So most of them have been trained or trained themselves to ask follow-up questions. But it must be said that oak and butter can play very well together. Toast, cinnamon, butter, forget about it. Man, I'm hungry. So what's happening here? These flavors all come from something called malolactic fermentation, which is also called malolactic conversion or mallow or MLF. And its diehard fans are known as MLFers, which only sounds dirty because of what they do at conventions. The mallow part refers to malic acid, which is a tart acid found in all grapes, especially when they're unripe. If you want to know what malic acid tastes like, take a bite out of a nice green apple. That tart, sour flavor, malic acid. In some wines, these green apple flavors can be desirable. Tart, acidic flavors can make a wine crisp and refreshing. Think of a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio or dropping a green Jolly Rancher into a Mountain Dew. But other times, winemakers may want to soften those acids in order to flesh the wine out and give it some body. Here's where the lactic comes in, specifically lactic acid. Lactic acid is much softer than malic acid. It's sour like a good cheese rather than like a crab apple. In fact, lactic acid is a huge component of aged cheese. So does this mean that your lactose intolerant friend needs to worry even more about staining that brand new white couch brown? Not at all. Lactic acid is not lactose. And in wine, it's not animal derived either. So that part of it is vegan friendly. But lactic acid isn't the only result of MLF. There's also carbon dioxide, which usually dissipates into the air. There's also the production of a compound called diacetyl. That name may sound bizarre, but you had it before, especially if you've had microwave popcorn. That's diacetyl, which sounds much better under the name imitation butter flavor, in the same way that Patagonian toothfish sounds much better under the name Chilean sea bass. So why do winemakers do this? See, here's the thing. It's not something that winemakers have to actually do. Far from it. Like crashing into a tree while texting, it's just going to happen. If winemakers don't want the effects of malolactic fermentation, they actually have to take steps to stop it. After alcoholic fermentation, the winemakers can chill the wine to prevent MLF from happening. So even though MLF isn't technically a form of fermentation, more properly, it should be called malolactic conversion, it still follows some of the same properties. Chilling the wine stops the MLF process. Once the wines are chilled, the lactic acid bacteria in the wine can be filtered out. And without that lactic acid bacteria, there is no MLF. Without that MLF, there are no flavors of butter, cheese, dairy, sour cream, or any of the other things that characterize a standard buttery Chardonnay. Avoiding MLF is important for more aromatic grapes like Riesling or Sauvignon Blanc or Gewürztraminer. These grapes are known for their complex fruit and floral flavors, as well as herbaceous and herbal notes. MLF's dairy notes can overpower these delicate aromas, just like a delicate mist of perfume can be squelched by bathing in sour cream. Winemakers may also want to avoid MLF for wines that are designed to be crisp and thirst-quenching. 
Say what you will about Pinot Grigio, it's very refreshing on a hot day. That acidity would be softened considerably by MLF, turning it from tart lemonade into some weird kind of milk soda. But why don't they do it with reds, you ask? You assume too much, my friend. Reds almost always undergo MLF. After all, it builds body, character, strong bones, healthy teeth. The crisp acidity sought in white wines isn't always treasured in reds. God, it's hot out there. Can I get a tall, chilled glass of Merlot? There are exceptions. In especially hot vintages or regions, the grape's acid levels can drop considerably, threatening to unbalance the wines. MLF would only further soften that acidity. So you can see that the butter-producing malolactic fermentation process is actually a huge part of the process of making wine. So why is it that when we talk about buttery wines, we really only ever talk about Chardonnay? Because Chardonnay is a weirdo. A wonderful weirdo. It can grow just about anywhere, from the coolest regions to the warmest. It is incredibly responsive to terroir, and if you're not familiar with the term terroir, you have to use it about every three minutes or they take your wine glass away. The full gamut of Chardonnay's flavors is a topic for another video, but suffice it to say that those flavors are subtle enough that Chardonnay makes for a perfect blank canvas to show off whatever the winemaker wants to do with it. And malolactic fermentation is, let's face it, kind of neat. Turning sour apple into golden butter is straight up alchemy, yo. And if you really like butter in Chardonnay, and there are many, many, many people who do, then congratulations. I'm glad that you and this noble grape have found each other. I hope you make each other very happy. But if you don't, please don't think this means that you have to give up on Chardonnay. It is one of the world's most popular grapes, not because some winemakers have overplayed their butter hand, but in spite of it. We don't give up bacon just because somebody oversalts it. We give up bacon because we can't fit into our pants anymore. Chardonnay comes in all levels of butteriness, from none at all to full-on lobster bib. A good place to start is Chablis. The cool weather in this northernmost part of Burgundy leads to high acid Chardonnays with lemon and green apple notes. In this way, it's a lot closer to a Sauvignon Blanc than a creamy Russian River Chardonnay. Chile makes some excellent lean and crisp Chardonnay, especially coming from the cool Casablanca Valley. And Australia also has some delicious, refreshing Chardonnay in the Victoria region. And on the North Island in New Zealand, the style of Chardonnay there is much closer to Chablis than it is to California. Even California is taking a much more restrained approach towards MLF. So let the label be your guide. Look for phrases like butter bomb, rich and creamy, or cardiologist paycheck, and act accordingly. And that's butter in Chardonnay. I really hope you try Chardonnay in series from leanest to richest, just to get the full range of flavors. And if you want to learn more, subscribe to this channel and always rock out with your corks out.